My name is Nikita Nkese. I'm the founder and creative director of Sweetest Kiddies Empire. Hello and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi Ewanfo. And I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. I'm a child rights activist. I'm a teens cancer law. I'm an author of a children's book that has been adopted in more than 30 schools in Nigeria. I'm an associate fellow of the Royal Commonwealth Society. But most importantly, I'm someone that has worked with children for the past 13 years now. I'm still counting. I understand how they think. I understand how they feel. I understand how they react to things. Majorly, everything about um, a child and young people's psychology, I understand it perfect, perfectly well. And it's always a great, great privilege and opportunity to work with young children. Young children, that is very important. First, we are going to understand you uh, because now you are an adult, no? Let's understand you when you were still a child now. So I want to understand where the passion is coming from. Tell me a little bit about your background. Okay, about my background and connecting it to what I do, Sweetest Kiddies Empire. Uh, I grew up in a family where my parents, especially my dad, would ensure that we read and summarize to him books. We would, um, he made us listen to country music a lot. And then most importantly, he was always this um, father that would tell us, whatever you do, make sure the next person around you, you make life easier for the person. Not difficult, but easier. So I grew up with this love for humanity. Now, what how Sweetest Kiddies Empire was birthed was when it was, um there was a time I was to be enrolled to the university, but my parents had challenged providing the fees. So that period I stayed at home, high school, between high school and um, the university, entering into the university, I found out that I had great passion to call the kids around me, to teach them, to help them understand what they had challenges learning in school. I could teach the little older ones how to sew, how to knit, and then that was just how it started. When I got into the university, I knew I wanted to do more. I knew I wanted to do so much for the children. I knew I could do more for especially those in my neighborhood that could not go to school just like um, I had challenged at that point in time. So what I did was, uh, what influenced me was um, Agbani Diary Golden, uh, the beauty, the Miss Walt. I told myself, mm, I can do this. So when I got into the university, I learned there was something called Miss University of um, Calabar. So I picked up a form. When I picked that form, it was not to show that I'm more beautiful than others. No, but I picked the form because the um, cash money and the office, the power, the finances that comes with that office was of interest to me. I told myself if I could get this money, I could do more for children around me. So I got into that part and that was in 2009. And by the grace of God, I emerged the winner. So when I emerged the winner, everything that came with the office, I used it to impact life. And those programs are still um, speaking till date. I remember I went to the, I could go to orphanages around Calabar, Cross River State. I could um, visit um, the neighboring um, streets around mine. I would distribute school materials. I would, I, I did so much that most times I'm like, thank God I could use my experience, the in quote, bad thing, the unfortunate thing that happened to me as a stepping stone to make life better for the Nigerian child. That's lovely. <laughs> All right, so you becoming the, the most beautiful woman in the campus now. How do you feel about that? Tell me about a bit uh, your experience at the time. Okay, when I met the Miss University of Calabar, Cross River State, Nigeria in 2009, it was one of the amazing nights of my life. It was amazing. I could, I, and 
I was just in year one, just year one. I was just entering university at that time. So I told myself, you mean I could win those in year two, in year three, year four, year finals? Wow, baby girl, you are good. I was so grateful to God that he made that happen. So the experience exposed me to lots and lots of opportunities. I could easily meet with the vice chancellor. I could meet with local government chairmen around my state. I could meet with stakeholders and tell them, this is the proposal I want to do. This is what I think the Nigerian child will benefit from. Please support me financially. And every time the support was given, I would do something. I would document it. I will get to show them. So we time i was trusted with more when the opportunity for uh miss niger delta came that's uh, the queen of the nine producing states in nigeria i picked up the form i told myself okay this is a better <laughs> opportunity to do much more because all of my interest was in doing more. I just wanted to do more. I saw the sufferings of children around me, the child abuse, the neglect. I knew I could do more. And we all know that doing more means more money. So I picked the form for Miss Niger Delta and um, I prepared for it. I trust God that he that gave me the win for Miss Unical will also give me this particular win. And guess what? In 2012, when I... Um, went for the uh, competition it happened in the yelsa state that night was I, I i asked myself truthfully i asked myself what are you doing here have you seen all these beautiful ladies have you seen them so rich and everything what are you doing here and then i tell myself nikita you better go out there win this because so many children's destiny are tied to you winning this crown this night and I told God, Father, make it happen. And uh, to the glory of God, I was Miss University. Uh, sorry, I was Miss Niger Delta 2012. So automatically that meant more money, more opportunity, more stakeholders to see. The nine all producing states in Nigeria, I could write proposal, sit down, put something together, meet any of those nine governors or their ministries that take care of children, um, welfare. I'll meet with them and tell them, okay, this is what I want to do. This is what I've done before for children. And if you trust me with more, I would definitely deliver. So that gave me so much, so much, so much and a better platform to impact the life of the Nigerian child. That's very important, the life of the Nigerian child. And anyway, before we get there just now, uh, because not every uh, woman or young woman is able to become a Miss uh, Niger Data. So uh, what was your preparation towards that? Uh, can you share anything in line with that? Okay. Um, for anything, I keep telling young ladies that nobody would... Um, give you um, anything you need in life on a platter of gold. No, you need to work for it. You need to prepare for it. And one of the most important preparation that has worked for me and so many others have read about is reading books. It's very important that you read as a young lady. Open, read autobiography of amazing women doing great things. Read about... Um, Oprah Winfrey, read about Ellen DeGeneres, read about um, Ngozi Gwenjiwela, read about so many of them, pick them from all over the country of the world. We have women doing amazing things. Read about them with your phone, Google about them, get to hear their heartbeat on how things, um, how they got to where they are. That's what I did majorly. I read about so many problems in the society and how one or two persons was able to provide solution to it. Then another thing was my genuine love for humanity, just love to see people better. When once you love to see people better, nature has a way of making sure doors open for you to actualize that which is in your heart. So uh, read books and then travel. You might not have to travel to the next country, even in your state, you can just leave your local government, move to the next local government or go to the next state. Traveling helps you to um, be more tolerant to people's way of life, uh, be religiously um, 
be tolerant to people's religion. These are the things that have helped me. I don't have um a mindset where I say things must be done this way. If it's not the way I know it is, then every other person is wrong. No, life is not like that. So as a young lady, read about things, um, have genuine love for humanity, travel if you can. Travel to the closest places you can. If you can go far, fine. And then learn. It all boils down to learn, relearn, and unlearn. And then, of course, learn again. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That is uh, a, it's almost like the magic word of the time that we are living in today. That we need to learn how to learn and how to unlearn and then relearn. It's very, yes. very important. Yes, uh, in um in a classes academy we try to stress much on this too uh, because we have different students coming in to start up their businesses we have uh, training related to mindset and all lot of this because you need it to be able to survive in today important. particularly if you need to acquire the soft skill that you require very important so yeah yeah thank you for mentioning that you're welcome uh, be before we get more into what you are doing today which is uh, child welfare i'm sort of a little bit curious because now you've got this office both as the most beautiful woman in your university and also the niger data these are power accompanied with money like you said tell me uh, what did you do with this money and the influence that you have in some specific way okay um one of the um most important thing I did is if you go to the University of Calabar, the um, female hostel, I did one or two renovations there that still stands. And um, I did, I can't really remember, but I know I did um, projects that in such a way that I was awarded by the student uh, union government. Then I was awarded for. Uh, I, th I think it was called um, Award for Humanitarian Services or Award for Service, something like that. And then I moved further to establish my um, NGO called Sweetest Kiddies Empire that over the years has um, blossomed into seven arms. We have Sweetest Kiddies Spelling Bee that has been on since 2015. It grew to the point that last year we sent representatives to Dubai to represent Nigeria in an international spelling bee competition. And one of our spellers emerged winner in her category. That puts Nigeria on the, um, a platform for a win. Then apart from the Sweetest Kiddies Spelling Bee, we have Sweetest Kiddies Kids Can Sing where we teach children how to play musical instruments. It's been proven scientifically that when a child is exposed to music, it helps them to memorize and understand what they are taught easily. And then we also have Sweetest Kiddies Summer School, which is coming up next month. We run it annually where children are gathered. We teach them numeracy. We teach them literacy. We teach them public right, um, sorry, public speaking. We help them to build self-confidence. And then we also have um, Sweetest Kiddies Teenagers Online Session. This is where we tell parents, allow your kids, those that don't have phones, give them your phones. Within this time and this time of the day, we're going to talk to them. We're going to cancel them. We're going to hear their fears and uh, prefer solution to the problem. Because we know teenagers these days have so much pressure, so much poor pressure on them, so much societal pressure, so much family pressure. So we make our time in Sweetest Kiddies um, Empire through Sweetest Kiddies Teenagers Online Engagement Session, whereby anywhere a child is in Nigeria, anywhere a child is in the world, the parents can connect them to us and then we can tell them on any situation they might be having um, issues. And trust me, teenagers have a lot and lots of questions. Some of them, if you hear them, you would feel so much sympathy for the teenagers of today. And then we have Sweetest Kiddies Poetry Competition, where we... Um, one of the things that I'm known for is that I'm an international judge for the Queen's Commonwealth AC, which has been on for um, 136 years now. I'm one of those persons that judge entries all over the 54 
uh, Commonwealth country. So with this knowledge, what I do is I uh, transfer it. I love to transfer knowledge. I transfer it to the children and young people of today. On that sweetest kiddies poetry competition, I teach them how to write award-winning poems, award-winning essays, award-winning any write-up at all. A child comes into this academy and um, we make sure that the child knows what is expected in each of the write-up he or she wants to put out to them. The one that is so dear to my heart is um, Sweetest Kiddies Sanctuary and Sweetest Kiddies Scholarship Scheme. This is where we have um, we have children who are intelligent but cannot, due to um, the economic situation, family or financial status, they cannot afford to pay their fees. Remember, I was in same shoes, so... We have more than 30 children on our scholarship board. And then we have the Sweetest Kiddie Sanctuary where we cancel children that have been sexually abused, morally abused, psychologically abused, and even physically abused. We need a lot of people that have good heart towards the children, particularly looking at what is happening in the country, in Africa, because these children are the hope. They are the only hope, are the only hope that yes. we have. Yes, so we, we must care about them. We must. Now, um, have you said that, tell me, what actually motivates you into this uh, uh, children project? What is the singularity that actually motivates you into this project that you're doing today? Uh, what motivated me, like I said, was when I experienced that um, unfortunate situation in uh, my life when I was growing up and... Um, it was it, it was psychologically draining. It was hurtful. It was painful. I could see my mates going to school, and I just could not go to school. I stayed for a, a year plus before my parents were able to get me into the university. So I told myself back then that I must sweat till every child, every young person, person is impacted by my life that whatever i've experienced a child if i can help it no child in the world should experience it and then over the years till date what keeps me going what motivates me is whenever i hear a child tell me thank you man because of you i can be this i hear young people say when a young person tells me, because you have done this, man, today I can stand. Or when a parent put a call across to me and say, thank you so much. Because of you, my child is now much more aware of his or her capability, much more aware of his or herself. Thank you so much. So these are, even when it's, um, you know, every organization has its own challenges. Even when the challenges comes, this testimonies, this feedback is what keeps sweetest kiddies empire going all right uh for people who don't have a, a clear understanding of what uh welfare e uh, children's uh, welfare is because that is one of the things we are talking about today uh, can you give us a description can you define it because this is the sector where you work okay to make it very um easy and simple so everyone can follow everyone can understand i'll put it in very simple words that a child welfare or children's welfare means ensuring that every child every single child has access to quality education has access to shelter has access to food has access to health care and very importantly Everything about that child is taken care of. No single child should be deprived of the basic amenities of life. Actually, as you are explaining, I was I was thinking, and I believe a lot of Nigerians who listen to you also would think, no, uh, in that it made me remember one documentary that I watched. This documentary was done in the United States. It was titled "No Child Left Behind." Actually, I think they even propose a B on it. And looking at the African American children, some of whom uh, have not been taken along, no, because of how the system is, is set up and all that. So this documentary will try to address that issue. Well, if that uh, situation were to be translated into what is happening in Nigeria, I think it can comfortably be said that a lot of children are actually left behind in the country, and yet we say that we are preparing for a future. 
Uh, well, in that line, what can you tell me in terms of child welfare programs in Nigeria? What is available and what is working? Okay. Um, when in terms of child welfare in Nigeria, like you have um, rightly pointed out, ni the Nigerian child, um, the population of the Nigerian child left behind is alarming. Just two weeks ago, UNICEF um, released a data that we have Nigeria as a country has the highest number running into millions and millions of out of school children out of school children now without education how do you intend to change the world it's really alarming um from the north the east the west the south of nigeria we have lots and lots of children that are out of school um in terms of their welfare the government is not doing much. I'm, I'm sorry to say the government is not doing much because it might just be said, but we are not seeing it. We are not seeing it being uh, done the way it should be done. We're not seeing the actual um, work being put into. We're not seeing the realization of or the manifestation of what we see them tell us on the news or in the papers. Now, the persons that are trying to do their best, um, we have UNICEF Nigeria doing so much. We have Save a Child Nigeria doing so much. And then another set of persons that are really putting in the work are organizations owned by individuals. That's the truth. Organizations owned by individuals are the ones actually doing what the government should be doing. These are the persons doing it. But there is a limit to what an individual or organization can do compared to the challenge at hand and the funds they have. So these are challenges that the government, the government of Nigeria should be the one. OK, now um, let me um, give a very good example. Now, the Child Rights Act in Nigeria, it's sad to say that we have very few states out of 36 states in Nigeria. We have less than 10 states in Nigeria that have actually passed it into the law, the Child Rights Act. So we ask ourselves, out of 36, we are having less than 10 passing the Child Rights Act into law. Then how are we saying we are protecting the future of the country? Now, most of the things that are really fighting child welfare in Nigeria is religion and culture. Now, in northern Nigeria, it's known worldwide that um, a female should get married as an adult. What do I mean? Most countries using Nigeria, Nigeria, the um, age for one to be called an adult is 18. Now, in the northern part of Nigeria, where we have um, the Islamic religion being the order of the day, child bride is, is, is something that is very okay with them. We can see a child of five years. We can ch see a child of seven years being married. We can see a child of 10 years being married in the north. And there is nothing the government can do about it because they don't have laws in place protecting those children. So it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. What is a child of seven years, eight years, 10 years doing getting married? So this is where, and we have the issues where it will um, result in the child having um, genital issues, fetal issues. It's really crazy. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking. Then in the country as a whole, we're still fighting female genital mutilation all over the country. We, still, we have states that it's perfectly Nothing. There's no law against it. Then in the states, mostly in the south, that we have laws against it, we still have persons doing it. It's cultural practices. Now, that's where the cultural issue comes in. We have um, some set of persons doing it, some group of people doing it because to them, it's their cultural practices. It's okay. Now, these are things that individuals, like I said, cannot fight. Organizations, there's a limit to what we can do. We can only create awareness. But it's left for the government to make laws that say, if we catch you doing this to a female child, if we catch you doing this to a boy child, 
you will be sentenced because they are the only ones that have the right to pass such laws. So we are we are hoping and praying that we'll get more persons in um, the legislative that have the interest of the Nigerian child at heart that will pass these laws. Thank you. Thank you for that. And you were also saying that, uh, okay, make a reference to what is happening in the in the North, you know, talking about the, the child, child brides, child marriage, and things like that. Um, are the people complaining? Do the people realize that something is wrong, or is everybody just comfortable? That, um, now, that's the issue where um, religion comes into play and um, the culture of the people. To them in the North, that's their culture. It's okay. You can't come change it for us. <laughs> we are okay with that. We're not complaining because that's what their culture accepts. That's what their religion accepts. So um, if the people, if um, awareness is not created enough, they won't see anything wrong with it. The only person that gets to know to say that ah, this is wrong are those persons that maybe in one way or the other, they have seen the effects, the negative effects this has on the young persons, on the, the boy child, the girl child, and then those that have traveled out, those that have lived in other places, those that are schooled. We have very intelligent, amazing, wonderful persons from the North, living in the North. So they are the ones that know that these things ought not to be this way. But there is little or nothing they can do because the population of those against it is so minute compared to those that are okay with it or those that are indifferent. Mm -hmm. All right. I was reading uh, an article uh before I started to talk uh, to you about this interview, I think the article was in Human Right, um, Human Right uh, org, if I'm not mistaken, where they were talk, uh, looking particularly into the story of uh, child bride in Nigeria, no? and then of course they were also uh, the article was talking also about the right of the child. So does it mean that in Nigeria children have no right? So, and according to the culture, these children have no right. So you can basically do whatever you like to them because they don't have any right. Uh, so I'm not able to explain that part. Uh, now, the, the, the challenge with that is everybody knows that children have the right, but in a place where it's not passed into law, when it's not passed into law, it becomes a challenge. Because it's only when a law is passed, when something becomes a law that if anybody does um, um, anything outside that, the person is penalized. So if there is no law, then of course you cannot penalize the person. So the Child Rights Act in states in the North has not been passed into law. It has not been passed into law. For many years now, organizations such as Mind Sweetest Kiddies Empire and Tens of organizations in Nigeria have been begging, have been pleading, creating awareness, asking the government to please, please pass the Child Rights Act into law in northern parts of Nigeria or make it a law everywhere in Nigeria, the 36 states. But it's not been done. So as long as the rights of the child is not passed into law in Nigeria, there is nothing we you can't take a person to court in the north for doing what he or she shouldn't do against the child. For example, um, female uh, genital mutilation, um, the girl um, girl child marriage. You can't take them to court because there is no law against that in their state. You cannot just take them to court. So these are the challenges we we face in Nigeria. Thank you for that. I was just uh, okay. I quickly went and researched that article. That is what I was showing you uh, there just now. You know, it's, it's really kind of um, it's strange, no? Yeah, it's, it's also sad that uh, that is how we we treat uh, treat our children, and we want them to be the future of the of the world that we are building. I understand that this thing sometimes they are they are enshrined in the in the culture of the people. Yeah. But what is evil culture? Culture is a way of life for the people. And this way of life sometimes, uh, actually, in most of the cases, it's not written on the stone. Mm. 
Mm. It means that it can actually be modified, no? Another yes. Yeah, but because uh, we, we, we need to respect our ancestors, we need to respect our way of life, we need to respect our culture. That is how we understand who we are. Mm -hmm. But we need to also understand that that culture was made for us. We were not made for the culture. Well, so anyone that is not good should be done away with, should be changed. The, 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 the thing is now, how do you get people in... Um, People practicing this, how do you get them to know that this is wrong? It's wrong. Let's do away with such culture. Just like um, Mary Slazer, when she came into Nigeria and stayed in um, South Nigeria, specifically Cross River State, she came and stopped the killing of twins. Before then, it was seen as being normal. Even when she tried to stop it, there were some persons back then that were fighting her not to. Because they have, the, 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 the culture, their culture believes it's okay. They are perfectly okay with it. So at that point, you they need the government, need the kind of awareness that is needed is large scale that only the government has the finances to make possible. So government need to create awareness, large scale awareness, and let the people know this culture, these practices, it's wrong. We need to change it. It's wrong. We need to do away with it. It's wrong. So that's just, we need the Nigerian government to put an end to the issues of um, child abuse in Nigeria. Thank you for that. You're uh, even uh, by barely using common sense, uh, we should understand that certain things um, can be modified and changed. It's just like the constitution of a country, you know? Mm -hmm. It is, yeah, we still have rigid constitution and flexible constitution. Even the rigid constitution can be changed. It's only that it's a little bit harder to change compared to when it is a little bit flexible. You're very correct. So in that sense, uh, both the constitution, the rule that guides people, the culture, the customs, all of them can be changed. In my lifetime, certain culture have been changed in my place where I'm coming from. So to say that it is the way of life is our culture, yes, it is true. But we must understand that this culture, this law, are made so that our life can be better. better. We cannot yeah. use it to punish ourselves. Also because, you see, where some of these code were set up that guide the people, it was set up in a time. At that time, that was the level the people understood. Of understanding, yes. It, yes. Yeah. Yes. So we cannot say now that we that have advanced, we must go back up and start living in that level. Mm. We cannot do that. Mm -hmm. But also, we cannot destroy the culture because the people only act based on their level of understanding. Mm -hmm. So, what we are supposed to do as human beings is that we should make sure that what we are practicing reflect the time that we are living in today. Yeah. Yeah. Because consciousness have evolved, we will continue to evolve. You know, yeah. Yeah. if you if you transport what we are doing today. And uh, the way we report, the way we talk, the way we behave in our society to so maybe a thousand years from now, it's people will be laughing. Okay, maybe for yeah, example, you maybe it's, it's, it's different to be much yeah. more advanced than this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maybe for example, you you enter into a Mercedes Benz, you are happy driving around because that is the best that we can have today. Mm. But in five hundred years from now, they will laugh at you that you are riding a Mercedes Benz. They say, what 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 is it doing? <laughs> if, even if 500 is even too much even 20 years from now 20 years from now the the um, brand of mercedes benz will be so outdated just 20 <laughs> years from now it will be outdated so that's just like you said things um need to change we need to get better and not backwards we just need to get better so i just use that one as an example to show that things are advancing we also need to advance in our way of behavior and of course i know that it requires the effort of a lot of people now people like you like your organization and many others uh in nigeria that are working so that is where i want you to spend some time there what is needed to be done so that the people can take action against certain cultural belief and cultural practices that are no longer standing the test of time? Individual organizations are doing um, so much. When I go online and I read about, because I also need to know every day what's happening to the Nigerian child, what's happening to the children of the world. Every time I go online, I see one or two things individuals are doing, organizations are doing, they are doing, but like I always say, there's a limit to what an organization, an individual can do. Government should be 
be on their best behavior. They should be on their best behavior. They should um, form these organizations that are already doing so much, that have track records of doing great things for the Nigerian child, great things for the children of the world. Federal government of a particular country, like in this case, Nigeria now, should form these organizations. Now, in schools, they should... Um, they should bring out subjects. They should ensure that schools have um, a specific um, moral cancer law, child's cancer law. Like they, um, one of the things I do too, like I said in my introduction, I'm a teen's cancer law. So we go to some schools and they really, they will tell you they don't have need for your service. And you're like, are you really serious? In the society of today and the pressure the young people are um, experiencing in Nigeria, um, if you go through the news and in other countries of the world, we have teenagers this day so much under pressure that they are committing suicide. And you ask yourself, what is what exactly is a teenager thinking? Excuse me, please. What exactly is a teenager thinking of? Is it paying and um, thinking of how to pay bills, house rent, accommodate? What exactly? But the pressure of the world, internet pressure, prayer pressure, family pressure, is on them too much. So we need the government to say, okay, all the schools, it's high time you have moral um, guardians and counseling session to talk to the children, create that opportunity. Private schools, some private schools are doing amazingly well, amazingly well. I go to um, counsel children in schools and I'm so amazed at the advancement that the um, the school has and the things the school has put in place for the health being the health being psychological health of this teenager so government should do much more government needs to step up their game in protecting the nigerian child the government needs to step up they need to start funding organizations they need to Past the law, past the child's rights act needs to be. There is a limit to what we can do if that law is not passed. We need that law to be passed. Apart from the problem that you made mention of in Northern Nigeria, in this case uh, of child bride and child marriage and all the all the thing that surrounds it, no. Uh, which other area have you seen that? Well, which other area of deficit have you seen against the Nigerian child? Where the Nigerian child is suffering, and uh, this is important because um, if you don't take care of those problems now, those children are going to grow up with them, and those problems are going to become bigger, and they are going to become the problem of the society. Yep. Because there is no way you can escape it. You either solve it now or you solve it later. But solving it later means it's going to be more expensive, more, yeah. more costly. So yeah. that is what I'm trying to understand. Which other area have you seen? In terms of the deficit in, in the, the Nigerian child welfare. Okay, um, not just in the north, um, in the south, in the west, in the east of Nigeria, those problems also, those challenges also do exist. Now, for um, for the uh, challenges of the Nigerian child, not just limited to the ones I've talked about, we also have problems that emanate from the family. What I mean by family now, I'm talking about between the husband and the wife. When a husband is being um, physically abusive to the wife, that means beating the wife, the children in that household are learning from it. They are seeing it. There is no way psychologically it would not manifest later on in life if that child is not cancelled, if those children that witness it is not cancelled properly. So those things are the things that we we plead with homes when we're doing family planning. Please, husband, treat your wife properly. Please, the wife, respect your husband. Talk to him with kindness. Talk to him with respect because your girl child is watching you what you're doing, how you react to your husband, how you, you build the home, your girl child is watching. And that's the thing that she would um, take with her into her home, into her marriage, into her business, into everything you do. The boy child is watching the father. Children see everything. This is, if you watch, um, 
if you see um go on net you will see how a child can imitate the father or the mother or the parent um sorry or the the teachers in school or the pastor from a to z from it a child as um small as five years a child can everything will mimic the person perfectly well they see that the the the, the, the thing with parents is they think children are not watching Every step you're doing, every step you make, everything you say, the kids are watching. So in terms of the household, we, we, we tell parents, please and please treat your children with love. The housemaid you have in your house, treat that housemaid in love. You buy clothes for your child, buy also for the housemaid because your children are saying, they are learning from you. If you treat the housemaid unkindly, that's what they are learning. That's what they are seeing. They think it's right. It's, they think it's okay. They spend most of the time in the house. That's where they learn morals. That's where children learn morals. It's not in school. It's not in church. It starts from the home. Everything, like we, we are taught that the family is the smallest unit in the society, which is perfectly true, which is so correct. So everything, it's family, 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 not just the um, the societal problems, how about the one from the home? How about the one from the home? So the home is also uh, um, the aspect we look into when we're talking about children's welfare. Mm -hmm. All right, now, uh, because this is a responsibility of everybody, uh, like I was saying before, if we don't solve the problem now, we are going to face it later on. No? Yes. Uh, I'm trying to see where you see the responsibility of one of the biggest film industry in the world, which is Nigeria uh, film industry, if they have any role to play there. You see, the reason is that it is not just because we want to be good, it's because we want to save ourselves, no, save I'm... our nation, yes. and save these children. Yes. Because if we fail to do it, I repeat, there is no escape. Okay. When you realize probably you already are an old person, mm -hmm. they are young, they are, they are mature, they are going to manifest what you, the information you have uh, imprinted in them. That time right. you, you only have to be regretted. Ah, had I know, this mm -hmm. is the time. Mm -hmm. Like uh, um, melt, yeah, yeah, it will melt the rod when it's hot, not when it's cold. Because once it's cold, it's harder, it's stronger. You cannot um, change the, the ways of an adult, a uh, person at 30, 40, no. So if you need... Um, to build a child's character, you start when you want to build a human's character. Start from when the person is a child. So uh, when you're talking about um, Nollywood, you are so correct. The Nigerian film industry, I think, is rated the third, um, the biggest film industry in the world. Um, the the, the challenge, or is it second? Oh, sorry, uh, I think it's second. actually second in terms of the production. Uh, and, and, uh, sorry, yes, yeah, second in terms of the production and third in terms of the popularity. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, the thing is, like you have rightly said, we need to Nollywood needs to do better in the term in terms of um, the message they pass across in their movies. They need to do better. They need to set because children watch. Their parents have allowed children to watch lots and lots of home videos, lots and lots of home videos. While I was growing up, we did, Saturday was the only day you could get to watch television. Saturday, it was like reward for a good week. But these days, Monday to Sunday, children are watching television. They are glued to their television. So in that case, you normally would just need to do better with sending out messages that contain... Um, uh, messages that contain things that would help a child, help a family, help the society to be better. There are lots of uh, movies they act now, and the message is so strong. The message is um, beautiful. The message can, uh, in one way or the other, impact the society positively. So kudos to um, persons such as that, like um, Muadu, she's doing so much. That's the Ebony Life Woman. All of the um, movies she sends out, the theme is is family friendly, so we are expecting that the um, Nollywood as a whole would do same too, like they are doing in some of their movies. What about the the media other than uh, Nollywood? Because okay, Nollywood they are the filmmaker, yes, yeah, they do that. But what about the thing that we read on the paper? I mean, the I'm talking of newspaper, talking of the the national. Uh, 
Information Agency of Nigeria. I mean, how much are they giving in terms of orientation uh, so that the parent, because now it is not the children that we really need to talk to. We need to talk to the parent because this uh, abuse is actually coming from the parent, not the children themselves, no? So like that later, it's going to come for the children because they are going to inherit this from the parent. So uh, because these parents are getting information, they are respecting the authority in Nigeria. In terms of the information that is being disseminated from this channel uh, that is controlled by the state, what do you think needs to be done in that area? Um, I, uh, what needs to be done is basically, like you say, the right information should be passed across. The right information should be passed across in state-owned um, television, national television, the right information should be um, sent across. But um, it, um, how do I put it? it, it um, for us that are organizations that are into children and young people um, welfare, holistic welfare, there are times we are disappointed, sorry to say, with the Nigerian government, some of the things they allow to um, to be aired on um, national TV or on the um, on the space, the television space. There are some programs that should not be allowed. Some programs that should not be allowed. Some programs that we know in Nigeria, all it promotes is indecency, both in the dressing, the, the language, the script, everything about it. But sadly, it's been allowed, it's been promoted, it's been given free hand. So we, we hope that um, it boils down to having the right persons in power. It boils down to having the right persons in power because countries like um, um, Rwanda, that um, President Mugabe, um, we have seen that he has changed so many things in his country. There are some African countries that have stood up and said, if it's this, we don't want it. We don't want it. There is a president, I've forgotten his name now, that said, um, etiology uh, certificate. Those things he puts in place, is checking so many things. It's checking so many things. And the country has gotten better for it. So we need people like that in Nigeria that will stand up for the right and say, no, national TV, don't show this. Show this instead. No, censor this. No, don't put this out there. So till then, like I always say, there is a limit to what an individual can do. There is a limit to what an individual can do. I'm trying to understand what is um, uh, the... Okay, I know we did make mention of this before, which is the, the effect. If people continue to abuse the children, people don't... If the adult don't take care of the children, what are the consequences of that? So I want you to help me say something there because this is where you work, though. One of the messages I often pass across in interviews such as this is that a broken child, a broken child is an adult that will cause so much damage in future. So much damage in future. Now, you might think you, um, you have trained your children right. It's okay, there's nothing, they know the right thing to do, so there's no need for me to support any organization doing things about children. And then I tell them, have you forgotten that nobody is an island? Your children move out of the house and mix up with other children. What happens between that time and when they come back to the house? You have no idea. If you don't support us to put things right for other people's children, it, it's a cycle of life. It will come back. It will come back. It might come back and meet with your children. That's just the truth. So if you see any damage being done to a child, speak up. Because a boy child that has been um, exposed to um, abuse, sexual abuse, might end up being your child's bunk mate in secondary school and will influence your child. There is a limit to a child's resistance to pressure. There is a limit. So don't just care about only your children. Spread out your love to other people's children. You see a child that is, um, how do I, street children. We have lots and lots of street children in Nigeria. Do something about it. Because if you leave the children to survive using street um, sense, using um, street, um, what the length on the streets. These are children that would not have access to 
good job opportunities because they don't have the qualification for it. They didn't go to school. So at the end of the day, what happens? They are the ones that will knock on your door with a gun. They are the ones that will knock on your door, your 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 car door, and bring it, bring it with a gun. Because that's the only way they know how to survive. So like I, I always say, one for all, all for one. It's not just about your child. Care about every child because for how long can you protect your child? Just by your strength, for how long? They will certainly mix up with other children. So if you don't support um, organizations to cancel children, to create awareness for children, what this other child is learning that is not acceptable, the child will inculcate your child into it without you knowing. So as much as possible, support programs that has to do with children's welfare. Don't just love only your child. When you go to school, make sure that other people's children, if you can, you see a child walking so sad into school, call a teacher, ask the teacher, can you please check on, up on that child? What's wrong with that child? Yes, I know life is, we can be so busy, you might not even have time to notice those things, but try and when you notice them, when you notice them, speak up, say something, do something. I, I love what you said, no? Uh, in, a, in a very um, a clear example that if we fail to take care of these children, they're going to be the one that is going to work home. They're going to be on your door the next day and say, hey, we have come for the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, are going, you are going to die or they are going to die. That is the price of negligence. That's now, the price of negligence. Yes. If we look back to our culture, African culture, where we, that is very rich, Children were supposed to be the responsibility of everybody to grow. Okay. Yes. It is not just for one person because you are a rich person, you have a better children. Because you are poor, you have poorer children. Mm -hmm. It is the responsibility of everybody. Okay, I'm not saying that they need to pay you to go to university now. Because what is university anyway? What is education anyway? It's about le learning the code of life. Life, yes. And this code of life was in the hand of the society. Everybody was supposed to learn and be part of it. Do you remember uh, how frequent it was in your time? Okay, I'm not saying you are an old woman, no? When you were, <laughs> <laughs> when you were a child, how frequent was the cases of arm robber in your time? Uh, it wasn't. It, to be truthful, it, it, it was nothing close to what we're experiencing in Nigeria now. It was nothing close to that because I remember while growing up, even in school then, a parent was, um, a, another parent is allowed to um, caution a child, another child, when he or she sees the child misbehaving, even in church. Even in, on the streets, like you rightly said, in Africa and specifically in Nigeria, it's believed that the society, the community raises a child. It's a, a, the responsibility of everybody to train a child right. But these days, the sad thing is, if you um, caution a child, you, 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 you might be rebuked by the parents or the guardian. Why should you talk to my child that way? It's th this, this, it's, it's um, a common thing to see in school where a, a parent will come to school and ask you, why did you why why did you rebuke my child for that? You should have told me you had no right to. So all of these things are uh, combining to make it an issue in raising children. It's, it has become an issue because the things that the good things that were done uh, years like when I was much younger, we don't enjoy those things anymore. We don't see those things. The society putting hands now everybody's like or oh, your or oh, your in Nigeria means on your own mind your business so uh we should just go back to everybody living in um in harmony everybody trying to look out for one another like the nigerian police will say if you hear something say something if you hear something if um you notice that um a, 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 uh, how do i put it now if you notice that the next house by yours they um made there is being abused by the son of the owner of the house say something report them because at the end of the day the disadvantage might just spill to your home so it's always good to let's all watch out for the child every child every child it's, it's true it's true 
And because we are talking of the children, we are actually talking of the future, we are talking of the country, we are talking of Nigeria. You see, uh, in the time of colonialism, particularly, uh, the European, for them to be able to get grip of Africa and, of course, put it into the need they, they mm. wanted it. Actually, we have gone beyond the need now. We are crawling. Africans mm. are crawling on the ground. They are not even on their knee. They right. took the children and they created the children because they didn't really want to care about the adult because the adult, you are going to die off very soon. Yeah, particularly when you don't have a system, you are going to go very soon. So the future, the eyes actually should be on the children. children. If we are a country that want to amount to something important in the future, if we fail to look at our children, if we fail to take care of them, mm -hmm. we will just be lying to ourselves. Because very soon, many of us that are old, we will soon die. Then those that are young will replace us. Yes. If we if we maltreat them, then they are going to learn that and they are going to basically replicate it. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be very bad for everyone. Yeah. Um, now, when you say people should intervene, people sort of support projects like yours uh, that are sort of working for children. Uh, what do you expect them to do? How do you reach out to them and what do you expect them to do? Okay. Um... For example, now you live in a neighborhood and you see a child being abused. We advise that you go to the police station, report it, and let the police come and do their investigations. If you don't want to go to the police because there are some persons that naturally they don't want to have anything to do with police getting involved in their issue or them getting involved in going to the police station, we tell persons that just don't want to go to the police or have anything to do with police, we tell them, okay, go to organizations, like come to Sweetest Kids and report that something like this is happening to a child. We have um, BRCI, that's another organization in Cross River State doing so much for the Nigerian child. Go report to them, but say something, don't just keep quiet. Then if you don't have the time, these organizations, month in, month out, they are doing so much. Support financially. Because when um, we go from one place to another, we go with volunteers, we have to think of their feeding, we have to think of accommodation. So support financially, if you can go online, go, go, and then the ones you have seen has a track record of doing great things, of doing things that are impacting the life of the Nigerian child. Support financially, reach out to them and ask them, what can you do to help out? For people that want to uh, get to know you, that want to work with you, how can they reach you? Okay, um, first of all, you can check my website. We have a website, www.sweetestkiddiesempire, one word, sweetestkiddiesempire.org, that's dot O-R-G, www.sweetestkiddiesempire.org. Dot org. You can also reach me on my personal number plus 234-703-591100. That the country code Nigeria is plus 234. Then my number 703591100. Then you can easily, another easy way to reach me on LinkedIn. For those of us that are on LinkedIn, you can reach me with the name Nikita Nkese. Nikita Nkese. You search on LinkedIn, you will see me, Nikita Nkese. All right. Now, what would be your, um, your recommendation for parents who have children? And now you are telling them what to do so that their children can actually grow to become better people in the society. What is your message to them? My message is, I always tell parents this, allow your child dream, nurture their dream. Don't force what you think your child, your child should be on your child. No, allow them be that which God has put into them to be. When a child says, I want to be a teacher, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an artist, I want to be a footballer, that dream of theirs, that it, it, it came on them, not anybody uh, uh, um, pushing them into, not your aid, not your aid. Speak kind words to your child. Don't use negative words on them. Yes, you can. I believe in you. I trust you. You're that giant. You will make a difference. You're my superstar. <laughs> Use positive words on your child. Use positive words on them. Expose them to every good 
everything you can. Expose them to books, expose them to libraries, expose them to, um, we have lots and lots of groups these days that organizes things for children. Summer is just around the corner. Involve them in summer schools. Things, allow them their creativity, let it show all you can do to make your child's life better. Do it for them. If you can, please, I tell parents, I advise parents, cut down on the time your child spends on television. They might not like it now, definitely. They won't, in short, they would not like it. But you as a parent, you know that good thing you're doing for them. They will thank you for it later. They will certainly thank you for them later, for it later. Reward them. There's a reward system you can use to make sure your children do the right thing. You give them a book to read and then you say, okay, I'm, they might think I'm mommy and daddy rewarding me for reading a book. Give it to them. Give it to them. It's called you're baiting them, B-A-I-T. With a book. So you tell them, okay, read this, summarize it, submit for me, and I'll give you some amount of money. They're like, uh, okay. Now you you want to because they need that money. So they think you don't have what to do with the money, but you you know that reading will expand their vocabulary. Reading will take them to a place they have not been. Reading will make them more appreciative of things around the world. So at the end of Thank you so much for that. Now, what would be your final statement here to conclude the conversation? So the conclusion to end um, our uh, discussion for today, I would say in all we do, let love lead. Let love for another human, let love for another child. Whatever you want people to do for you, in a world where we can be anything, let's be kind. Let's be kind. That is very important. There is no better word than be kind. That's powerful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm grateful. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate our review Obehead podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehead everyone for. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you in the next episode.